Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk with you about crepe myrtles. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people take a chainsaw and chop them off straight across and call that pruning and that's what I want to talk with you about today. All things crepe myrtles. Right now is the very best time to prune your crepe myrtle. I'm one who likes to see and learn by example. And so I thought we could go on a little field trip and see some examples of this improper pruning technique that is so bad. And if I could do, I, if I could put a billboard up and end this, I would. A crepe myrtle, if you aren't familiar, is a beautiful tree that is deciduous. It comes in many different sizes, many different shapes, many different colors. It blooms all summer long and is gorgeous. The bark is beautiful in the winter time. Some of them have exfoliating bark. They have like a cinnamon color that is absolutely beautiful in a winter landscape. People will plant them as standalone specimens or they can plant them in mass and create quite a statement like lining a driveway with crepe myrtles. Oh, it's so beautiful. A crepe myrtle is a multi-trunk tree and you normally have three to five trunks. So you tree form it, which means you see the trunk until it gets to a point where the actual leaves and branches come out and you have just three trunks coming up. Last year, I put together a video on the proper pruning of a crepe myrtle. I did a step-by-step -step tutorial and I am going to link that with this video. As I said, we're going on a field trip today and we're going to look at these specific improperly pruned crepe myrtles. So I, and I'm also, like I said, I'm going to show you improper, proper, and the growth habits of both after they are pruned, once they have grown in. So I'm gonna take you on a field trip. We're just gonna hop in the car and we're gonna take a little ride. You ready? Let's do this. So here is example number one. I have them to my left and to my right. And just by looking at it, I can tell that it was performed by a chainsaw. Um, there's a lot of damage done to the actual bark. And um, so the reason we don't want to do this is because everywhere that the limbs were cut, you take a strong viable branch and out of that is going to come little tiny shoots that are weak. And it just weakens the ability to hold up flowers and, you know, to give the strength to the tree, not to mention the overall look of the tree. Here is example number two. I actually witnessed this being done by a paid landscape company and they were using a chainsaw and just this made my heart hurt. So this is the outcome. This is what happens where it creates knobs or knuckles where everywhere it was cut and then you can see the tiny little shoots that come out of it that are very, very small like whips almost. And that is supposed to hold up the big flower heads of a crepe myrtle. So here's a little bit better look at that. This is what happens. This is the outcome. And you can see it's not even pretty in the winter anymore. They went from that size to look at the branch sizes now. So this is a crepe myrtle that really hasn't been pruned. But I just want to show you what its natural habit looks like. You know, the 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 trunks, this is, this has many, many different trunks, but it's still beautiful. And see how nice and thick and uniform the branches are. Let me scroll in just a little bit so you can see. See how nice it is? Uniform all the way down to the base. Go back up. So this is a crepe myrtle that has not been pruned, has not been chopped off, and you know, it's just, this is the natural habit. And I hope it doesn't appear like I am putting anybody down or, you know, thinking that I have all of the knowledge. I just really want to get the education out there. Um, this is one of the most valuable lessons that I learned in college. And so even if it's unintentional, incorrect pruning, I just want to help and maybe make you stop and think about the why behind your pruning. I'm linking the video for how to prune properly a crepe myrtle. So I hope it's been beneficial. 
I hope you don't do this. If you do, don't do it. Reach out to an arborist. Reach out to me. I'm happy to talk you through. I do provide coaching services, um, and I can do those virtually if you're not local. And uh, we can get your crepe myrtle back in the land of the living. Probably not perfect, but we can try our best. And if you do have a crepe myrtle, just resist the temptation to give it a flat top. Um, I don't it's just unnecessary. I hope you have a chance to get your hands dirty today. I'm working on my February checklist. This weather has been so warm. I'm waiting to do that rejuvenative pruning. Um, I'm just going to have to do it. I think next week I'm running out of time. So be coming back, looking for that, looking for, I'm going to start my winter sewing. I'm going to uh, start burning holes in my containers probably tomorrow and uh, I've got a lot coming up. So I hope you will come back, check, subscribe, hang out with me, leave comments. You know, I love the comments. I love meeting you guys. Uh, Y'all are amazing. And I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Take care.